question for the next five minutes is, what would happen if the volcanic eruption of Tambora in 1815 would repeat itself today? What would be the consequences of such an eruption today? So in 1815, when Tambora erupted, it was actually the largest eruption in the last thousand years who happened on the world. It killed about 70,000 people, and actually most of them were killed because the ash fall destroyed all the crops. So most of them were killed because of the resulting famine and epidemics. But the eruption itself was actually also quite impressive. So this here is a picture of Pinatubo. So Pinatubo erupted in 91, maybe some of you remember that eruption. And Tambora was about 10 times bigger than this eruption. So as you imagine, this is a very initial state of a volcanic eruption just when it starts. But if this ash cloud actually reaches a level where the ash cloud itself has the same density as the atmosphere, it starts to spread laterally. So you have like this huge extent, this huge area, which is all covered by ash. The area covered by ash by Tambora was about four times the size of the UK. So it covered actually a very, very big area of, of Indonesia itself. But the eruption also caused some pyroclastic flows so these are like hot clouds of hot ash and gases which can become 500 degrees hot and they can have a velocity of more than 200 kilometers per hour. So they're very fast and devastate basically everything that's in their, mind, in their way. So maybe you can see at the bottom of the picture here. This is just when a pyroclastic flow starts to form. So it's, it's very intense, it's very large and it devastates everything. But um, the, volcano, the Tambora volcano was also very interesting because volcanoes normally emit a lot of sulfur, it's just in their chemistry, and this sulfur gets um, attracted around the globe very fast, so it gets distributed worldwide very fast. And this sulfur in the atmosphere actually managed to backscatter a lot of the incoming solar radiation, which leads to a reduction in temperature on ground. So we know that actually after the Tambora eruption, the year later, 1816, the global temperature were decreasing by one degree. So maybe some of you know about uh, 1816, the year without summer. Some of them call it also 1800 and frozen to death. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it led actually in North America and Europe to serious famine because all the cold and the snow in June were destroying all their crops. So my question is, what are the consequences if that would happen today? And um, my project is actually going through different stages for that. So the first stage is actually reconstructing that eruption as detailed as possible. Luckily, at that time of the eruption in 1815, uh, Indonesia was a British colony. So not lucky for Indonesia, but lucky for me because there is a lot of literature written about because Sir Stanford Raffles was very interested in the eruption and collected a lot of um, kind of um, statements from that eruption from different places from Indonesia. So we know some little things about. We also know some things about the global climate, which we can relate back. So there is a pretty good story behind this reconstruction. Um, we have also volcanic deposits, which we can refer back of like how this volcano actually, what it did and what was the sequence of the eruption itself. The second part you look at is actually volcanology. So if you specialize actually just on the ash fall, so from this big extent of this big ash cloud, um, there are some deposits of this ash fall, which we collected, some of them also in the deep sea. And um, it is actually mainly to figure out what was the extent of this ash cloud exactly. Um, as you can imagine, this eruption was in April. So it was just at the start of the monsoon in Southeast Asia. What if it would have erupted in October? You would have completely different winds. So maybe your ash cloud would go in a completely different direction and it would affect maybe more or less people and much more population would be in danger maybe, or the opposite. It's also important to look actually at the grain size distribution. So a lot of ash has very, very fine particles in millimeters and micron size. So these are actually just particles who shut down our, our airspace last year during the Ayafiatla eruption. 
So this is very, very fine ash, and obviously it's very light, so it can stay up for days in the atmosphere and just disturb our whole aviation business and general business itself as well. So it's very important just to look actually at this distribution and figure out like what is the amount of fine ash we have in these clouds to figure out where did it go and what will be the danger to aviation and business. The third part to look at is actually how would the climate react today to such an eruption. So we have maybe today a different atmospheric chemistry. We have more CO2 in our atmosphere, we have more methane. Would that actually change the impact of the eruption on the climate or would it just like react the same like the picture we've had we've having from 1816? Also here we can do like the comparison with different seasons. So obviously you have different atmospheric climate pattern in different seasons. So would that affect actually which reach regions on the, in the world would be more or less affected by this temperature reduction? So and the last thing to look at is actually the socioeconomic impact of this eruption. So is the hypothesis that obviously today you have much more many people living in this world, also Indonesia was booming, and you have more than 10 times more people in Indonesia than you had in 1815. So obviously the hypothesis would be that also much more people would be affected. Well, we can also say that we have today much better first aid supply, we have much better food supply, we have international aid, we have much advanced infrastructure than at this time. So maybe the fact that we can help these people much faster, much better, would actually help not to lose so many lives. But is this advanced infrastructure really helpful in case of, of a an, an volcanic eruption? As you've seen last year, how do you want to bring the food supply to these places? By plane? Through the edge? <laughs> so there are things you have to consider when you look at the socio-economical impact. There are definitely positive advances since 1815, obviously, but are they really this well and can we really like cope better today with such an eruption than the people could in 1815? That's about my story. Thank you for your attention.